Hey everybody, this morning I am in Indianapolis, Indiana, but barely Indianapolis, Indiana, honestly. If you go just across the street here, you're no longer in Indianapolis. So actually you get into Avon, Indiana. So we're gonna talk about this particular border a little bit and how this kind of border can happen commonly around Indianapolis and maybe give you just a little bit of an issue, a little bit of a problem. So we're gonna discuss that, stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in, of course, Indianapolis, Indiana, or nearby, right behind me, Avon, Indiana, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video. Now we have people reaching out to us from all over the country with questions, of course, about Indianapolis, but also about places like Avon, Indiana, and questions about stuff that they really may not see coming, like what we're gonna talk about here today, or at least something that's a little harder to see coming. So if you have questions about Indianapolis, Avon, Carmel, Greenwood, Greenfield, Plainfield, any of the cities and towns that surround Indianapolis and Indianapolis itself, then make sure you reach out any way that you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions, and we'll certainly have your back when it comes time for you to make your move anywhere in the Indianapolis metro. All right, again, guys, I'm in Indianapolis, but I am really, really far west in Indianapolis. And this particular intersection is probably not all that interesting, although there's a lot going on here. The traffic right now is not that bad. Kind of later in the morning, rush hour's over. And later on, ugh, it'll get pretty nasty through here. So this right here is US 36, and it is a very busy road. Rockville Road is what it's actually called, but US 36 is the highway, and it is extremely commercial. So if you go further to the east, and also kind of loud, it's a nice loud car there. Further to the east, you're in Indianapolis proper, and I am right on the border of Indianapolis. You go further west, and it'll take you through really the heart of Avon, Indiana, which is a popular suburb for a lot of people. Not an enormous place. You've got Brownsburg just to the north, and then you've got Plainfield just to the south of here, and of course, Indianapolis over there just to the east, and Danville to the west. So Avon is kind of sandwiched between all of those. Not that Danville's very big either, about 10,000 people or so, and it's quite a few miles down US 36. But the border here is Raceway, Road, which you can see right behind me going north and south. And if you were to be going, let's say from Indianapolis, like all these cars are, and like I came just this morning, I was coming from Indianapolis off of I-465 over there to the east. Off 465, I'm headed west. You go through this intersection, now all of a sudden the address has changed. So right here in this Walgreens behind me, Walgreens all over the place in the country, of course. This has an Indianapolis address. But then any one of the businesses you have here across the street, like this PNC Bank, there's a Solus Salons, there's a Qdoba over there, I see a vitamin shop over there, there's a Meyer, which is right back over here off my shoulder, there's a Chick-fil-A back there. Those all have Avon addresses. So obviously when you cross Raceway Road, you're going from Indianapolis to Avon, but you probably wouldn't know it. And in fact, there's very little signage to indicate that you've done so or that you've gone from Avon back into Indianapolis. Usually when you cross the border, you're gonna have some kind of sign. It might not be huge and glamorous and glaring and bright, but there'll be a little sign on the side of the road saying Indianapolis welcomes you or welcome to Avon, something like that. But this is a pretty inconspicuous border right here. Now, how that can cause a problem or how that can be a little bit tricky is we talk to people a lot that want to live in a suburb of Indianapolis. So they wanna live, let's say if it's on the west side, that location's best for them. They're looking at Brownsburg, just up to the north. They're looking at Avon here or Plainfield to the south. And they still need access to Indianapolis. They still need to get into the city, maybe on a daily basis for work, or even if they work remotely at home and they still maybe twice a week have to go into the city. So you go west of I-465 and you go towards Avon, there is a tendency to think that when you get outside of 465, you're no longer in Indianapolis. But actually from where I'm standing, the last time I checked, which was quite a few days ago, I remember it being 3.2 miles from this intersection to 465. And you think, big deal, 3.2 miles, how long is that gonna take me? Well, it depends on what the traffic's like. On Rockville Road right here, that could take quite a few minutes. On a good day like today, if it popped in the GPS, it's probably gonna be about seven-ish minutes, somewhere in there. 
but if you add traffic on top of that, it will add some minutes to that. So it could climb up to maybe 10 or 11 minutes if a lot of these stoplights are really backed up. And then when you get to 465, you're gonna run into some traffic there potentially as well. So if you've got a 30 minute commute on a bad day, it could be 40 or 45 minutes maybe. Now some of you might laugh at that and think that's not a bad commute, but if you're used to the traffic around the metro here, 30, 40 minute commute is kind of long. And anything you could do to shorten that by five minutes or 10 minutes, that's a pretty big win. That adds up to a lot of time during the day, during the week, and of course over the entire year. It really adds up quite a bit. So if you were looking on the west side of Indianapolis and you think, well, I wanna make sure that I'm in Avon, but I need to be on the west side of Indianapolis. Well, you gotta get outside of 465 at least those 3.2 miles to get to this point and then really most of Avon is much further west of this so if you lived in West Avon you could be talking about seven or eight miles all the way to 465 and you're traversing this entire road which will cause you some trouble sometimes but you don't have to be on this road you could go south of here and travel east-west. You could go north of here and travel east-west. But my point is that Avon doesn't start until you're well outside of 465. Brownsburg doesn't start until you're well west of 465. And it's the same with Plainfield too. So it can be a little bit tricky. The other one that comes to mind that seems like, oh yeah, we must be in Greenwood just because we're on the south side is Greenwood. You have to get pretty far south of 465 before you're actually in Greenwood with a Greenwood address. That actually happens all around Indianapolis. It's so easy to look at a map and think 465, all of Indianapolis is on the inside of it. When it can actually stretch miles to the outside. The only place it really doesn't happen is on the north side. Generally, the border between Carmel and Indianapolis is 96th Street, generally. But 96th Street actually sneaks its way inside of the loop. We call 465 the loop, and I'm sure that's probably common in a lot of cities that have a highway that circles the city. So 465, it travels inside the loop there just a little bit, and you could be on the north side of 96th Street and still have an Indianapolis address. But generally, when you're traveling along 96th Street, as long as it's outside that loop, then it's gonna probably have a Carmel address, and south of it's gonna have an Indianapolis address. It can get just a little bit tricky as to exactly where you are, but generally on the north side, 465 is roughly the border of Indianapolis, roughly. Of course, 96th Street is that bigger one, but it's not the case out here. So it can definitely be something that you need to be at least a little bit aware of. And if you're looking at a place in a place like Avon, let's say, and you see a specific house or a specific neighborhood, and you really like it, but you work someplace in Indianapolis, it would really do you well if you plop both of those locations into your GPS and see what the drive time looks like, maybe at different times of day. Try it at 7.30 in the morning. Try it at five o'clock or 5.30 in the evening. Try it at one o'clock in the afternoon and see what it looks like. See what the distance looks like and then see what the drive time looks like. And you can compare that same distance to other locations to where you need to be in Indianapolis and see how the time differences might be variable, even though the actual distance could be really similar. So traveling seven miles on a road like this, ugh, it's a lot different than traveling seven miles on a road that's pretty far south of here or pretty far north of here where you're not gonna run into a whole lot of problems all that often with the traffic. So pay attention to these borders around Indianapolis. I'm sure it's not the only city where something like this happens, where the map can deceive your eyes as to how geographically large Indianapolis is or any other city. So you have to pay attention to that when you're moving here to Avon, Indianapolis, wherever, because it can play some tricks. So if you have any questions about Indianapolis or Avon or those borders or how it might affect you, reach out to us any way that you know how, and we'll see you in the next one.